actually. So I'll try and focus on some uh, easier experiments that anybody can do that uh, actually don't cost anything. And one of those involves sundials. And uh, there's a great site here called blocklayer.com where you can uh, print pop-up horizontal sundials for any latitude, both uh, north and south hemispheres. Now, basically, that's what the template looks like. And uh, what you can do is uh, just use this slider bar. You'll see that as you change the latitude, the geometry of the template changes. Okay, and I'll explain that a little bit more shortly. But one thing that's really important here, and it's actually quite critical to the whole demonstration, is that as you change latitude, the geometry changes. But if we only change hemisphere, the geometry doesn't change. Only the numbers swap over from side to side. So let's just change to the northern hemisphere. You'll see none of the angles changed. They stayed exactly the same. Only the numbers are reversed. Okay, now that's only going to work if the southern hemisphere of the Earth is the mirror image of the northern hemisphere. Now obviously that is true on a globe, but is it true on a flat Earth? We'll have a look at it. Now these sundials work in the real world. You'll see for any given latitude in the northern hemisphere, we can change our latitude and the geometry changes. But if we just change hemisphere, the geometry doesn't change, but the numbers swap from one side to the other. So it's basically a mirror imaged version of the sundial. Now when you come to print these, what you end up with is a template like that. Okay, what you need to do is just cut out the template and fold it along this line and then fold it along those lines. And what you end up with is something like that. Okay, and I've made a whole bunch of them, all different ones, okay. But uh, basically, if we look at um, the latitude in Sydney, it's about 33 degrees. That's uh, a southern hemisphere sundial. And I've made the equivalent northern hemisphere sundial for the same latitude in the northern hemisphere. And you'll see it's the mirror image, essentially the mirror image. You'll see the numbers there. We've got five, four, three, two, one. And on the other side, it goes up um, six, seven, eight, nine, coming back towards the gnomon. All right, so another critical thing is that um, these are actually designed so that the gnomon here, this is that, hor that uh, sloped part of the sundial, when it's aligned on the actual globe Earth, it's aligned with the axis of the uh, Earth. And that's a critical part about why these sundials work, and, and you'll see that fairly clearly in uh, the next demonstration. So for the first experiment with these two uh, sundials, they are both uh, created for a latitude of 30 north and 30 south respectively. And uh, this is the one for the northern hemisphere. It points to true north. And this is the one for the southern hemisphere, it points to true south, that's how it should be oriented. And you'll see just by looking at the numbers, as I've mentioned, that uh, they are actually mirror images of each other. And what I'm going to do in the first experiment here, is I have aligned these on a sloping surface of 30 degrees, so that the gnomon on both sundials is effectively level with, uh, with each other, and that's uh, what's going to be aligned with the Earth's axis. So that's the whole key of why these work. Now, for this experiment, I'm going to uh, do a couple of things. I'm going to actually run the spotlight straight down the middle of the book. So that's going to be equivalent to operating on the equinox. We'll then run the light um, basically overhead this part of the sundial, which would be um, when it was over the Tropic of Capricorn, for example, and then running it over this part of the sundial when it's over the Tropic of Cancer. And the point of that is that this change in position from uh, Tropic of Cancer to the equator, then to the Tropic of Capricorn, it doesn't make any difference. The accuracy of the sundials will continue to work as we move the lights. So the first uh, experiment will be with the sun traveling right between the middle of the two sundials, as if it was operating over the equator. Okay, so you'll see that as I move this sun to directly overhead, there's no shadow. And then as I move the sun, there's 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m. and 4 p.m. on both sundials at the same time. Now what I'm going to do is deliberately move that light away from the center point towards the sundial for the northern hemisphere. And that's as if the sun is now operating over the Tropic of Cancer. And you'll see that it really makes no difference. 
because if we move it directly overhead, there's no shadow. If we move back slightly, it's 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., and 4 p.m. on both sundials at the same time. Now what I'm going to do is just move it to six months later where the sun would be over the Tropic of Capricorn. And again, you'll see it makes no difference because both sundials are still synchronized. 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., and 4 p.m. Now this is quite critical because when we uh, have a look at the sundials aligned on a flat earth, moving the sun left and right like that away from the equator is going to make a big difference. These sundials will actually go out of sync. So just for the last part of the demonstration, we're going to have a look at these same sundials on a flat surface and how the, uh, the movement of the sun causes them now to go out of sync because they're actually designed to have the gnomon aligned with each other, which is actually aligned with the Earth's axis on a flat Earth. That's not going to be the case. So let's just look at uh, this. This is just a uh, Gleason map. And there's some extra latitude lines drawn in there. Zero is obviously the equator. Now, if we've got the sun moving around this equator, it's moving around this red circle, okay? We've got uh, one sundial set up for south 30 latitude, one sundial set up for north 30 latitude, okay? Now, these radial lines here represent 15 degrees. So if the sun was moving along this red line, every hour it's going to move 15 degrees. So that's two hours, that's three hours. At four hours, it's going to be up here. Okay, now you'll see that the angle from this position where the sun would be to 30 north is quite different to what it would be to 30 south. Okay, now we just demonstrated that the sundials remain in sync when they are oriented correctly and it doesn't matter if the sun is over the tropic of uh, capricorn or the tropic of cancer it doesn't matter because it doesn't change the reading on the sundials however now on the flat earth what i'm going to do is just going to move the light around and move it to about where the um the 4 p.m position would be and we'll just take a look at what kind of reading we get from the sundials because you'll see very quickly that they go out of sync. So that's another problem for the flat earth because in the real world, these sundials work. They work at 30 degrees north, they work at 30 degrees south. They stay in sync as my uh, previous demonstration. But if the earth was flat and the gnomon on the sundial is not aligned with each other as it would be on a globe, then the sundials just simply don't work. So basically on a flat earth, sundials in the southern hemisphere are not going to work. And I'm just going to show you that clearly now with an actual demonstration. So now we have the sundials on a flat surface. And as you'll see, the gnomon are not aligned with each other. Okay. And uh, if I put the sun right between the two sundials as if it was on the equator, they're going to be in sync. But if we start moving one direction, say, for example, towards the Tropic of Cancer or back towards the Tropic of Capricorn, you'll see that the sundials actually go out of sync. Okay, now that does not happen in the real world. Okay, an equivalent sundial in the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere always shows the correct time, as we saw previously in the previous example. Now what makes matters worse is, as I just demonstrated on the Gleason map, as that sun moves around after four hours, it's sweeping around this curve, and after four hours it's going to be somewhere like that. You'll see just how much out of sync the sundials are now. One's showing close to 5 p.m. and the other one hasn't even reached 4. So this is a, uh, a big problem because the sundial in the southern hemisphere is going to become significantly out of sync with the sundial in the northern hemisphere if the earth was flat. It just doesn't work at all.